Hi, this is Namrata Hira and this is the new topic of botany, genetics. In this presentation, I will cover the principles of Mendelian inheritance. First coming to the introduction, Mendelian inheritance, also called Mendelian genetics or Mendelism or monogenetic inheritance. It is a scientific theory of how hereditary characteristics are passed from parent organism to their offsprings. It underlies much of the genetics. This theoretical framework was initially derived from the work of Gregor Johann Mendel and it was published in 1865 and 1866 which was rediscovered in 1900. Initially it was very controversial. So before Mendel there were many theories proposed regarding hereditary. One of them was pangenesis and the blending of blood theory of heredity. It proposes that hereditary material from each individual parent mixes in the offspring. Once blended like two liquids in a solution, the hereditary material is inseparable. So just like how colors blend as can be shown in the figure when blue and yellow blends it forms green and the colors cannot be separated back. Similarly, it was considered that once trait blended they cannot be separated out to appear again in the later generations. So the individuals of a population should reach a uniform appearance after many generations. Once traits are blended, they cannot be separated out to appear again in later generations. So an early hypothesis of how traits are passed from one generation to the next. Pre-Mendel, this was a popular idea and Darwin even considered it as a possibility. So this blending of blood's theory of hereditary was considered to be very common before Mendel. So now let's quickly have a look at the history of Mendelian principles. The laws of the inheritance were derived by Gregor Mendel, a 19th century Austrian priest monk. He conducted hybridization experiments in garden peas called Pisum sativum. Between 1856 and 1863, he cultivated some and tested some nearly 29,000 pea plants. From these experiments, he deduced two generalizations which later came to be known as Mendel's principles of heredity or Mendelian inheritance. Mendel's conclusions were largely ignored, although they were not completely unknown to the biologists of the time. They were not seen as generally applicable even by Mendel himself, who thought they only applied to certain categories of species or traits. So he started his crosses only with parents he demonstrated were true breeding. He also measured absolute, that means binary characteristics such as color, shape and position of the offspring rather than quantitative characteristics. So in 1900, his work was rediscovered by th three European scientists who were Hugo de Vries, Karl Korens, and Eric von Schermack. So, coming to the Mendel's law. Mendel discovered that when crossing white flower and purple flower plants, the result is not a blend rather being a mix of the two. The offspring were purple colored. So like in the figure we can see when a purple colored flower and a white color flower were crossed the result was not a light purple color or the mix of the two. The result were all the offsprings were purple colored. He then conceived the idea of heredity units which he called factors one of which is a recessive and the another one is dominant. 
so mendel said that these factors later which which uh, which were called as genes normally occur in pairs in ordinary body cells yet segregate during the formation of the sex cells each member of the pair becomes part of the separate sex cell the dominant gene such as the purple flower in mendel's plants will hide the recessive gene that is the white flower after mendel self fertilized the f1 generation and obtained the 3 is to 1 ratio he correctly theorized that genes can be paired in three different ways for each trait as a capital a capital a small a small a and capital a small a where the capital a represents the dominant factor the lower case a represents the recessive so we'll come to it later so mendel stated that each individual has two factors for each trait one from each parent the two factors may or may not contain the same information if the two factors are identical the individual is called homozygous for that trait and if the two and if the two factors have different information the individual is called heterozygous for that trait the alternative forms of a factor are called alleles the genotype of an individual is made up of the many alleles it possesses an individual's physical appearance or that is phenotype is determined by its alleles as well as its environment an individual possesses two alleles for each trait one allele is given by the female parent and the other allele is given by the male parent so the pea plant which mendel selected for his experiments has seven different variable traits so scientists say that it was due to his luck and the very important selection of the plant that mendel succeeded now coming to the characteristics of the pisum sativum that is the peas which was studied by mendel coming to the seed the seed were uh, gray gray and round and white and wrinkled the cotyledons were yellow and green the flower color is purple that is violet or white the pod form was constricted or full the pod color was yellow or green and the stem uh, stem size is either long or short and lastly the placement of the stem of the flowers were like uh, either they were axial pods the flower along or the terminal pods where the flower were at the top so these were the seven characteristics of pisum sativum which helped mendel in his experiments coming to the first law of mendel which is also called the law of segregation in the case of pod color the mendel p experiment showed that a cross between a green p pod plant and a yellow pod plant produced only green pod plants for the f1 generation so here in the figure we can sorry in the figure we can see that when a green pod is crossed with a yellow pod the f1 generation is that all are green so here the yellow pod characteristic has totally disappeared now however the f2 generation threw up a surprising result the yellow pod variant appeared in a quarter of this generation clearly something strange was going on and in an inspired piece of thinking mendel came up with law of segregation however the f2 generation threw up a surprising result the pod variant appeared in a quarter of this generation so mendel came up with law of segregation and he said that there are alternative forms of genes the units determining heritable characteristics this is known as an allele an organism inherits 
one allele from each parent. The F1 generation inherited one green and one yellow pod allele from the parental generation. A sperm or egg carries only one allele for each characteristic which pair upon fertilization. Now when the alleles are different, one is fully expressed and the other is masked, which we now commonly say that the fully expressed is the dominant one and the one which is masked is the recessive gene. So the two coexisting alleles of an individual for each trait segregate during gamete formation so that each gamete gets only one of the two alleles. This is the law of segregation. More precisely, the law states that when an individual produces gametes, the copies of a gene separate so that each gamete receives only one copy, that is only one allele. A gamete will receive one allele or the other. So the two coexisting alleles of an individual for each trait segregate during gamete formation so that each gamete gets only one of the two alleles. The law of segregation states that every individual possesses a pair of alleles for any particular trait and that each parent passes a randomly selected allele of only one of these to the offspring. The offspring then receives its own pair of alleles for that trait. Whichever of the two alleles in the offspring is dominant determines how the offspring expresses that trait. For example, the color of a plant or the color of the animal's fur or the color of the person's eye. Alleles again unite at random fertilization of gametes. So coming to the next law which was stated by Mendel and it is called as the law of independent assortment. So it states that separate genes for separate traits are passed independently of one another from parents to offsprings. That means the presence of allele of one of the gene present in the gamete has no influence over which allele of another gene is present. In independent assortment, the chromosomes that result are uh, randomly sorted from all possible combinations of maternal and paternal chromosomes. Because gametes end up with a random mix instead of a predefined set from e either parent, gametes are therefore considered assorted independently. If two or more characters are taken together for observing the pattern of inheritance, different pairs of alleles behave independently and during segregation they separate randomly as well as independently. They are not linked to each other. This is because different pairs of alleles are located on different pairs of homologous chromosomes. While these genes express, they do not influence each other and each of them remains independent and unique. So in this figure, we can see that diagram. Like each chromosome has its individual allele. So while they are separating, each allele will separate differently. So like capital Y and capital S will come together or capital Y or capital small s will come together or small y and capital S or both small, both recessive characters. So it basically means that these genes are not influenced by each other and they are segregated and uh, they uh, remain independent and unique. So let's take an example of Pisum sativum having two different traits as P color and P surface. So what is the predicted phenotype ratio for a cross between the two P plants which are both heterozygous at both the loci? Let us try to deduce the ratio. So we will choose the P having the phenotype smooth yellow which is heterozygous at both the loci over here and we'll cross it with again the smooth yellow which is the heterozygous and both the loci. So the genotype will be capital S small s and capital Y small y. S uh, similarly the genotype of this will also be the same where capital S stands for smooth 
Small s stands for wrinkled, capital Y stands for yellow, and small y stands for green. So let's have a look at what will be the results. So the gametes which will be formed by this will be capital S, capital Y, capital S, small y, small y, capital Y, and small y, small s, small y. Similarly, the gametes, four gametes will be formed from this species as well. So, we will arrange the gametes in a horizontal as well as the vertical manner. Now, if we cross them, we will get capital S, capital S, capital Y, capital Y. Similarly, capital S from here, capital S from here, small y from here and capital Y from here. Similarly, capital S from here, small s from here and capital Y from here and capital Y from here. Again, capital S from here, small s from here capital Y from here and small y from here. Similarly, we'll get the ratio for, uh, sorry, similarly, we'll get the um, genotype for each of them. So let's deduce the ratio. So we are getting nine smooth yellow. That means where either both of the alleles is capital S or at least one of them is capital S, both like here, or only one like here. Similarly, with the P surf, uh, similarly with the P surface, it's like either uh, sorry P color. That is either both the Y should be capital, or at least one of them should be capital. That means at least one of them of capital S is dominant, and at least one of Y is dominant. So it will result in the smooth and yellow texture. Now next we are getting three smooth green. That means at least for smooth, that is it's necessary that at least one S is capital. And for green, it is necessary that being a recessive character, both the alleles should be small y. So th this is what we are getting over here. This is capital S, at least one capital S and one capital S, and both the y are small. So this is three smooth green. Now we are getting three rough yellow. For yellow characteristic, we need at least one capital Y. So we can see that at least one capital Y is present. In this, there are two capital Y. But for the rough appearance, that is for the wrinkled appearance, we need a small s. And it being a recessive character, both should be small s. So here we can see in the, sorry, here we can see in the figure, Punit square, that these two are small s, small s, uh, and double s, small, small s's and small s's. So these are three rough yellow. And lastly, for one rough green, all of them should be recessive. That means two small s and two small y. So this is the ratio that we are getting. 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. So this is an example of a typical dihybrid cross. And the expected ratio is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. Now, another example. Let's take an example of Pisum sativum having the same traits as shown in the previous slides as P color and P surface. So, what is the predicted phenotypic ratio for a cross between two plants which are both heterozygous? Sorry, uh, which is uh, one is heterozygous and both loci. And another one is either heterozygous and or homozygous. Heterozygous and homozygous. So, like um, phenotype, let's take an example of a smooth yellow, which is heterozygous and both the loci. What happens when it is crossed with smooth yellow, which is heterozygous for S, but homozygous for dominant Y? So, what do you think will be the genotype? So, the genotype of this will be capital S, small s, capital Y, small y. As we have seen, it is heterozygous at both the loci. And here, it is heterozygous for S, that means capital S, small s. But it is homozygous for dominant Y. That means it will be capital Y and capital Y. So now, what will be the gametes which are formed by this? So let's have a look at this. Here, it will be capital S, capital Y and smallest small y. Smallest capital Y and smallest small y. 
so there will be not four alleles four gametes coming to this there will be capital s capital y and small s small y so basically only two gametes are formed from this so what will be the expected ratio the f1 generation will be six will be smooth yellow that means at either one loci one should be a capital s for smooth and for yellow at least one locus should be capital two rough yellow means for being rough the s both locus should be a small s so here we can see both are small s and since uh, ratio is uh, presented in the simplest mathemat mathematical form the answer will be three smooth yellow is to one rough yellow that means three is to one is the ratio so some are uh, in this slide i'll just quickly show you the common expected ratios of different dihybrid crosses you just practice one by one how it came so so the key is the same capital y is for yellow small y is for green capital s for is for smooth and small s is for wrinkled so what if we uh, cross a heterozygous at both loci with a plant with a heterozygous at both loci we have seen this in the previous slide and what ratio we got was 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 this one also we have seen what if we cross the heterozygous at both loci uh, when it is crossed with heterozygous at one locus and homozygous dominant on another so what ratio do we get is 3 is to 1 now what if we cross a heterozygous at both loci with the heterozygous or the homozygous recessive which is exactly opposite of this here another locus both were dominant here we are looking for the recessive one so what result we are getting the result is 4 is to 3 is to 1 just try deducing it as to how it came through so common crosses are also uh, just practice make a punit square with this and get uh, see what results do you get when you cross all these things capital s capital s small y small y small s small s capital y capital y capital s capital s y y with everything small and capital s in everything small and s s capital y and y so what are the expected ratios so after deducing just check your results with this that all will be capital s small s capital y small y here it will be all will be capital s small s capital y small y and here the ratio will be 1 as to 1 as to 1 as to 1 so here i um uh, let's have a look at another example of a dihybrid cross taking an example of the same having the different traits as p color and p surface now we'll see what is test crossing or back crossing so generally this uh, to determine the genotype what will be the genotype of a plant if we don't know so generally a test crossing is done so a rough p is test crossed to determine its genotype we'll see how so suppose we have a rough yellow okay so it will be rough means definitely it has to be both small both recessive homozygous at a recessive and yellow means at least one has to be a capital now what when it is crossed with uh, no sorry the Uh, genotype that means the gametes which will be formed will be small s capital y and small s small y now rough yellow can also be that both are small but yellow can be both capital right it can be both homozygous at this loci so the gametes again will be formed from this will be small s capital y small s capital y so what if we are asked that what is the if you are getting a particular ratio they are asked as to what is its genotype so the genotype can be either of them 
so how do you determine the genotype so for determining the genotype you will test cross it with a homozygous recessive just remember test cross is the unknown with a homozygous recessive so here we'll test cross it with rough yellow everything recessive so cap uh, small s small s and small y small y so the gametes found will be just sy so what if we cross both of them we'll get ssyy here everything small and here we'll get a uh, small s small s capital yy and small s small s capital yy so we can see that a green p is present if the unknown parent genotype is ssyy that means if this genotype is there at least one green parent a uh, green plant will be there however there will be no green peas if the genotype is ssyy so this question is asked that what will be the genotype of the parent if you are getting one green pea so it will be simple the genotype will be ssyy you just have to test cross back cross with a recessive allele homozygous recessive that is important so here we come to an end of this presentation here are the references thank you